Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about replacing skies using Photoshop, including how to load your own set of skies into Photoshop so they're always there whenever you need to swap out a sky. Now we're just going to jump right into it and start with this image. Now I want to replace the sky, so I'm going to go up to Edit and then down to Sky Replacement. When you do that, this dialog box appears. It will probably plop in a sky that is uh, maybe the last sky you used. Now, I don't want to use any of the built-in skies. These are the default skies that are in Photoshop. Blue skies, spectacular skies, and sunsets. I want to use a third-party set of skies, and I want to load them in here so they're always there. First of all, I'm going to give them a folder. So I'm going to click on this little folder icon and I'm going to give them a name. And I'm giving them the name OccuDrone Silky Smooth Skies. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm using this set of skies from OccuDrone. I actually did a video demonstrating how to replace a sky using Luminar AI. And I mentioned this set of skies. I have no affiliation with OccuDrone. Uh, they're not paying me to do this video, and if you buy their skies, I won't make any commission on the product or sale at all. In the description below the video, I'll have a link to their website. I just like their skies because they're unique from sky to sky. You know, what my experience, that a lot of the sky packs have a lot of the same sky repeated. It's just maybe framed slightly differently, or they shot it at a little bit of a different focal length. These skies are mostly all unique, and that's why I like them. So I want to load uh, one of these sets of skies in here. And I already um, created that folder. So now we're going to click on the little plus sign. And I have them on my desktop. They're right here, OccuDrone Sky Packs Complete Collection. And I think for this one, we're going to do the Silky Smooth Skies right here. So we'll open that. And I want to uh, load all of these. So I'm just going to click on one and hit Command A on my Mac. It's Control A on a PC to select all of them. And then I'm going to click Open. And what it will do now is it will load them in here. And this does take a while. You can see that it's creating new sky presets and it's slowly counting from 1 to 25. So I'm going to pause the video. And we'll come back once all these skies are loaded in here. Okay, it's just about done. It's at 25 of 25. And hopefully it will load them in there within seconds. And there they are. All right. Now, one little thing you're going to find when you load them in, like I just did, what you'll find is if you go up here to our little folder we created and I close it, the skies aren't in the folder. So it didn't automatically put them in the folder. So what you need to do is click on the first one that you just installed or loaded. So it's going to put it in the, the image. But then go down to the very last one, hold the shift key in and click on that. That way you selected all of them. So all the skies are selected. And now you're just going to click and drag them into that folder we created. So now they're in that folder. Now I need to pick a sky. Now, if we look at the original image, ignore the sky that was just uh, installed on the image, uh, you'll see that the sun was to my extreme left. So you can see how the lighthouse has light on the far left here. So I need a sky that matches that. Now, if I can't find a sky with the sun on the extreme left, one on the extreme right will work as well because I'll be able to flip it. But with this, what we're going to do is just kind of look through them. And this one looks really unique. Let's try this first. Yeah, that is pretty unique. It looks like it, you know, reflects the way I want it to look in that the uh, sun is kind of towards the left. Let's just go with that. So now once you chose a sky, you get to kind of adjust it, fine tune it to the image. Shift edge. If you move this, you're just going to be shifting the sky up or down slightly. You can see how it's kind of just blending in a little better along the horizon line with that. Fade edge is very similar. If I move it to left, you'll see how it's making the new sky more prominent at the horizon line. And if I move it to the right, it's making it a little more blended in with the original sky. 
I think I like it more that way. And this one a little more that way as well. That looks a little more natural to my eyes. Now next is sky adjustments. If you don't see this, make sure that you click this little expose triangle to roll it open. And we have brightness. So you could adjust the brightness of the new sky. That is mainly just affecting the sky. And you can do that so it kind of matches the image a little better. The temperature of the sky. So we can make it a little warmer, a little cooler. In this case here, I think a little warmer works because the it was sunrise actually. The sun was over here to my extreme left. So um, I think that looks a little, you know, okay. Scale, we could kind of zoom it in if we move this to the right and zoom it out more if I move it to the left. And you could see we could zoom it right off page. We don't want to do that. I kind of like it kind of zoomed in. It kind of looks different. We could flip it. I mentioned that before. So if uh, you need to match the lighting, um, this actually may look better. It's hard to tell on this guy. I chose the hardest guy to, to try. The lighting mode, uh, multiply or screen. You could see that when it's screen, um, the original image, anything that's like popping up into the sky or maybe overlapping with the sky a little bit is a little bit brighter. If I go to multiply, it's a little bit darker. I think multiply looks more natural here. Lighting adjustment, this is just the way that it, mainly I've noticed, affects the middle of the image right around where that horizon line is and you could kind of try to make it so it looks a little more natural there color adjustment this is a very very subtle adjustment and many times i don't see this doing anything uh, when i do that so that there you can move around see if it does anything on your specific image see if it works better now, where do we want to output it to? A duplicate layer? That's probably what you do most often, or new layers. Um, let's just try new layers. Also, this preview checkbox. If your machine is running very, very slowly when you're doing this sky replacement, moving the sliders, just turn that off, and then you could, you know, work kind of in the dark by moving the sliders, but it, then you could turn it on and get a full look, you know, and maybe that will help you uh, work through the sky replacement adjustments a little more efficiently if your machine keeps hanging up. So we'll click OK. Now I mentioned we're going to have new layers, so you see we have all these layers now of this uh, sky replacement. Um, now I'm going to do another one because I want to show you an alternate way to import the sky images into Photoshop, which will save you that step of dragging them into the folder. And um, I'll show you the other um, output method, too, uh, where you will avoid all these layers over here. So we'll go to this image. And oh, again, we're going to go up to Edit. And we're going to go down to Sky Replacement. And it's going to plop the last sky we used in there. We're going to open up that drop down, And we're going to close this folder up. We're going to add a new folder now. So I'm going to click on Folder. And I'm going to give this one uh, OccuDrone Crystal Blue Skies. We're going to use for this and click OK. Now, last time, you know, to get those skies in there, we clicked on that little plus sign. This time, instead of doing that, right click right on the folder that you want the skies in. And then go down to Import Skies from Images. And again, um, a window will pop up allowing you to install the skies. Uh, as you want. Now I mentioned we're going to use the crystal blue skies on this set. So we're going to select them all. So they're all 25 are selected. And we're going to click open. And again, it needs to install them into Photoshop. Now these are always going to be in Photoshop every time you open it. So you don't have to do this all the time. Uh, but I'll pause the video again and we'll come back once they're installed. Okay, we're just about done. It's on 25 of 25, and it should be finishing up, and there it is. Now I want to show you, because I right-clicked right on the folder and installed them that way, they're in the folder. So that will save you that step if you prefer to do it that way. Now, as I look at this image, ignoring the sky that got replaced when we first opened the sky replacement dialog, uh, this uh, has the, the sun more toward my right as I recall too, when I was in this boat, um, it was over to the right, kind of shining this way. Although the, you could see everything is pretty much uniformly lit, 
but you can tell that the lighthouse is a little brighter on the right side than it is on the left side. So we want a sky that has slight directional light right to left, although left to right will work, we'll be able to flip it. So as I look for these skies, I mean, we'll just pick one, I guess. See, that one doesn't look natural in here. It just looks too kind of big, I guess. So we'll find something else that might work a little better. Don't care for that one either in this image. How about this? This is kind of interesting, although the light doesn't quite match. Uh, you could see how the clouds have the light more in the upper right. Now I could try flipping it. Let's just do that. We'll jump right here and see if that looks slightly better. Um, still, I don't really care for that in this image. It's a great sky. I just don't think it looks um, natural in this image. Now this might look a little better. Um, yeah, this one might work. We do have to flip it. All right, so once we flip it, yeah, it, it works nice. And I like how the clouds are kind of flame, framing the lighthouse. So let's work with this. Now, um, in this image, if I p turn off preview, uh, you'll notice that there was like a radio tower here and there were all these lines uh, kind of, you know, holding up the radio tower. And when the sky got put in there, it's kind of obliterating a lot of these lines. So I think the whiter, the lighter color lines uh, in the clouds, that would probably be okay. But we need to see them a little better. You can see they're coming up from the ground over here, but then they kind of disappear uh, up into here. So we need to find kind of a, a, a slider here that will help us kind of better see these lines. So if I go with shift edge, you can see, here we go. We go with shift edge and you can see how it, it's allowing us to better see those lines. Now, if I go too far, it doesn't look good, right? But what we need to find is that little kind of happy medium where we could just see those lines starting to go up and then they kind of naturally will fade around the clouds. So that doesn't look as bad. Um, we could come back to fade edge and see if that, now that makes it worse. All right, and then we could go to brightness, see if that affects anything, if we make it a little darker. I think that looks pretty good. We're kind of matching the shade of the blue of the sky to the water in the original image. Again, we have scale. We could zoom it out a little bit, but then it kind of like doesn't fit the image anymore. But we just need to get that where it was, which I think was right on 100 thereabouts. Um, all right, the lighting mode again, multiply or screen. I think multiply is probably still the way to go, although screen doesn't look too bad. I could compare the two. I think I'll go with uh, multiply still. The lighting adjustment, as I move it around, you can see again that kind of uh, affects that kind of area right in the transition area. I think right around there. Color adjustment. I think I'm just going to warm it up but it doesn't really warm. I'd have to go up here. There we go. That's what I meant. And this color adjustment then, it doesn't seem to do a lot. All right, now we are going to do this time, I'll put this to a duplicate layer so you could see what that looks like. I'll click OK. And you could see that we just have an entire layer that includes that new sky. This might be the way you prefer to go if you're really done doing your editing in Photoshop. Um, at this point, or if you want to do something to uh, the entire image now, including the sky image. For example, if I want to put levels on here and I want, to, uh, want it to affect everything, so I could come in here and, and adjust levels, let's say, and it affects the entire image because I'm using the background copy. Now, conversely, if we do the original method and we have all these different layers inside of this folder, uh, if you wanted to add an adjustment layer or do other adjustments, uh, you may want to put a stamp layer on top. On a Mac, the keyboard shortcut for a stamp layer is Shift, Option, Command, E. On a PC, that's Shift, Alt, Control, E. Then you have that stamped layer on top. Then you could open up levels and you could do things here to adjust everything, the entire image. So I think that's everything you probably need to know about replacing a sky in Photoshop.
Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.